فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك الله على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حبيب مجيد. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this beautiful gathering. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all in attendance and to bless this community. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it a source of goodness and source of hidayah for a lot of people. We in the name of Allah wa ta'ala. Ni'am Allah azza wa jalla la tu'addu wa la tu'hsa. The bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are countless. You could not possibly enumerate them. Wa in ta'uddu ni'mat Allah la tu'hsa. If you were to try to hold the count of one of the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not be able to. Whenever I hear this ayah, it reminds me of Allah. SubhanAllah, the, uh, the hadith of the Prophet when he spoke about a halabi, a, a worshipper for Bani Israel, that asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put him in seclusion in an island so far away from everything, thousands of miles away from any kind of civilization. And he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, ran a stream of water for him to drink from, and he made a tree of pomegranate grow from the rocks so he could eat from. And he literally sat down in that area, just whenever he gets hungry, he eats from the pomegranate. When he's thirsty, he drinks, drinks from the stream, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 600 years. 600 years. And then at the, the end of the 600 years, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow him to die, to take his soul while he is in sujood. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did. But when he was brought in front of Allah on the day of reckoning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Ya Jibreel, said to Jibreel, Ya Jibreel, take my servant to a Jannah with my mercy. But this was a worshipper, not a alim, not a scholar. So there's some information is missing there. He said, no, Ya Allah, I want to go to Jannah because of my deeds, because I worshiped for 600 years. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala insisted one more time, go to a Jannah with my mercy. He insisted with my deeds. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya yeah, Jibreel, bring me just his eyesight, just the eyesight. Oh, bring me rather just bring me all of his deeds of 600 years. Put him on one side of the scale and bring his eyesight and put it on the other side. Exactly. The, uh, uh, the side of the, the, the eyesight, the, the bounty of the eyesight was so much heavier than all of his deeds of 600 years. Then when he saw that, then he realized his mistake. Ya yeah, Allah, with my mercy, subhanAllah. Just to, yeah, Allah saying, wa in ta'uddu Allah. One of the bounties of Allah, for example, the eyesight, you will not be able to enumerate it, subhanAllah. But when we see ourselves submerged in the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what should be our reaction as believers? What should we do? And the answer obviously is to be grateful and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards those who are grateful to Him for the smallest things. Hadith of Anas, Akhrajah Muslim, Qala Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Inna Allah la yarda an abdi an yakula al-akbata 
فيحمده عليها وان يشرب الشربة فيحمده عليها imagine Allah gives you bounties it's your job after using those bounties and enjoying them just to be thankful grateful to Allah and what happens Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you is pleased with you and he rewards you for that gratefulness and thankfulness you see how that works and it's subhanallah anyway you look at it we are submerged in the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it doesn't matter how much we give thanks it will never be enough so subhanallah the prophet sallallahu alaihi said that, that Allah is pleased with his servant when he if he eats something or drinks something and he is thankful, he says, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with the servant. Many are the bounties of Allah, and one of them is the bounty of marriage. And we are here today because, subhanahu this is a walima of our dear brothers, Brother Musa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and bless his marriage. The ni'mah of a zawja, having, finding a righteous woman to marry, is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a tremendous ni'mah that a person should be thankful to Allah for. And if we're not, what happens if you're not grateful to Allah for his ni'mah? What happens to them? They disappear. Your Lord has proclaimed that if you were to be grateful for the bounty that He has given you, then subhanAllah, Allah will increase them. He will preserve them for you and increase them. But if you were to be, commit kufr. Kafatum here, according to the scholars, it could mean kufr, which is disbelief. May Allah protect you and I. It could also means kufran, which is ungratefulness. Either way, a person loses his bounties that way. We ask Allah Ta'ala to protect you and I. To show you and I the, yani how tremendous this ni'mah of finding a mate, finding a, a, a righteous woman to marry, it is a tremendous ni'mah. Allah says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَهُ مِنْ أَنْفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَشْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتِ الْقَوْمِ one of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the miracles of Allah that He created for you from, um, from yourselves, spouses, so that you may find comfort in them. His place between you, compassion and mercy, surely in this are signs for people who reflect, those who give thoughts, subhanAllah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ja'ala, الزواج من من آياته الدالة على قدرته ورحمته وعنايته بعبده سبحان الله الله سبحانه وتعالى من the marriage سبحان الله يعني from his ayat from his signs that show his power سبحان الله تعالى his mercy what he that he surrounds his servants with his bounties and he takes care of them. This is a sign of Allah taking care of you. SubhanAllah. And then on top of it, he puts the compassion and the mercy between these two people that get married. No two people are closer to each other than a husband and a wife. And SubhanAllah, a person realizes, a person will only realize that when he, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses him with the ni'mah of marriage, inshaAllah ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in many ayahs of the Quran he spoke about this هو الذي خلق خلقكم من نفس واحدة وجعل منها زوجها ليسكن إليها سورة الأعراف He is the one that created you from one soul and from that soul he subhanahu wa ta'ala made her made his mate his wife so that he will find tranquility with her. And as we know from the, the, the tafsir, that Adam alayhi salam sakal al-jannah fastawhasha fiha. Adam, he, subhanAllah, he felt lonely in al-jannah. So as he was sleeping, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took one of his uh, ribs from the left side and he made Hawa 
from that rib. And that's the name, hence the name Hawa. Even when he was asked, who is this? He said, Hawa. They said, well, the Malaika said, why was she called that? Because she was created from, from something living, which is the rib of a human being that is already living. And of course, Adam was called Adam because he was made from the clay of the earth. Adim, that's the name in Arabic, that's why it's called Adam. But subhanAllah, in that tranquility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts in marriage, a second, he called it. Tranquility and security, serenity and comfort, subhanAllah, comfort for the nerves, for the heart, for the soul, and of course for Ghaliza, the natural disposition, that uh, natural inclination, that the natural attraction that a man has for a woman. And subhanAllah, we know for a fact, uh, per the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu and our experience, that many people get married and the main drive for them getting married is that ghaliza, that natural disposition that passion that they have subhanAllah it should not be the case it's usually the case of young people but it should not be that way because that ghaliza subhanAllah yani, that ghaliza in young people could be the reason for fitna it could be reason for falling in a lot of sin but that same ghaliza that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in men could be the reason for yani in, the, in the, within the confines of marriage, as zawaj it becomes a source of hasanat it becomes a source of your ranks being raised with Allah and it becomes, it becomes a source of salafa that is given, put in your record subhanahu how do we know this? أخرج مسلم عن أبي ضرب الغفاري رضي الله عنه قال صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم إن بكل تسبيحة صدقة. So remember the word صدقة he kept he kept repeating in this hadith. Every تسبيحة you say سبحان الله is a صدقة for you. Say سبحان الله. ما شاء الله. A صدقة in your record just now. Multiply it by ten at least the seven hundred folds to infinity the mercy and generosity of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. وكل تكبيرة صدقة. Every time you say الله أكبر is a صدقة سبحان الله. وكل تحميدة when you say Alhamdulillah, Salaqa. Wa kulli tahlilati, we say, La ilaha illallah is a Salaqa. Wa amrun bil ma'rufi Salaqa. When you enjoy good, you advise people towards good, is a Salaqa. When you give da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save people from uh, from the kufr into uh, al-iman, that's a Salaqa. Wa nahyun anil munka. When you try to Ward or forbid evil, there is a salaqah. And what is the worst evil that you can protect people from? Is a shirk and kufr. SubhanAllah. So when you make da'wah, you have both. Al Amr bin Ma'ruf, Nehah bin Munka, Salqa, and Salaqah. SubhanAllah. Wa fi mud'i ahadikum, Salaqah. In SubhanAllah, a person fulfilling his desire in halal and intimacy, it's a salaqah as well. The Sahaba will listen to all of this and say, okay, okay, they were listening, they said nothing. When he said this one, then all of a sudden, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, seriously? Yani, Ayati ahluna shahwatahu wa yudur lahu fiha ajr. One of us will do, Yani, will, will have his desire fulfilled, and then it's, there's also ajr in that, there's also a reward in that. Qala Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, listen to that. The logic, this is the logic that we should use a lot, Yani, when we understand the text of Islam. O Mafhum al Mukhalaf. مفهوم المخالفة I'll give you an example Allah says ومن أظلم من من منع مساجة الله أن يذكر فيها اسمه وسعى في فرابه Who is worse than He prevented the houses of Allah for Allah's name to be mentioned in them and He sought to destroy them Okay What is مفهوم المخالفة in this Who is better than allows the name of Allah to be called and to be mentioned in the houses of Allah and he makes them, renovates them, he builds them, right? And the form of So the Prophet said, "Araitum la wada'ah fi haram, akan alayhi fiha alayhi fihi wasm." If the, the, he said, "Have you seen if the person puts that khaliza, he puts that desire in the haram way, in adultery, fornication, where they have a, a sin on him, 
He said, obviously, yeah, now we are so lucky. Bella, thank Allah, like if he put it in halal, it can be a hukaja. Subhanallah, if he puts it in within the confines of marriage, which is halal, he will get a reward for it deposited in his uh, account. Subhanallah. And this is one of the many, the countless benefits of marriage. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned Masalat al libas Hunna libasun lakum wa antum libasun lakum And subhanAllah, you are a garment, they are garments for you and you are garments for them. What does that mean? What is your garments for you? It is the closest thing to, thing to your body, the closest thing to your skin. So in every way, not just in a physical way, but in every way, your wife huh, should be that way, should be that for you and for the sisters, your husband should be that for you, the closest thing to you in every way. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designed it so that it will be successful and be a source of happiness in this life and in the, the hereafter. But when one of them becomes stops be, being the garment of the other, then they start going separate directions, and the problems that the alimah built in the masajid. Subhanallah, when people come to complain about their marriages and they come seeking uh, uh, yeah, means of divorce and things like that, it's usually when um, the, they stop being a garment for each other and they go their separate ways, subhanAllah. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he showed us uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the fadl, the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in marriage in many a hadith. He said, When the person with the, when the servant of Allah gets married, he has completed half of his deen, half of his religion. So let him fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he comes to the other half. Imagine. Yeah, and half of your deen is taken care of. Allah is taking care of it. I think we have three out of that. Done. Can you hear me? Yeah, that was that one. I think you just shut up for a little bit. So the half of your deen, I think your battery is dying here. So let's just sell that one. If a person gets married, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of half of his deen. So what is your... What is your job here? Take care of the other half. Make sure that uh, you don't mess it up. Basically, don't mess up the other half because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is taking care of that half. What for Ahmed? That's good. This is fine. Leave it in here. If I need help, I'll send it to her. Sorry. Ahmed Ahmed al Nasari. I'll be more able to tell you about him. Qala, kila ya Rasulullah. أي نساء خير؟ أي نساء خير؟ اسمعوا لرده وجوابه صلى الله عليه وسلم قال التي تسره إذا نظر وتطيعه إذا أمر ولا تخالفه في نفسها ومالها بما يكره حرم The one that pleases him when he sees her Does that mean that she has to be Miss Colombia, maybe, for example, or something like that? Huh? Or Miss America? <laughs> no, that's not the meaning. Huh? Because beauty is uh, in the eyes of the beholder, as they say. But subhanAllah, when, when the, she knows, she hears the, the door being opened, and she knows that it's the husband, her husband, what does she do? Huh? But she she's prepares herself, she looks her best. Huh? Not the same look where she's doing the housework, no, no, not that one. The other one, after the housework is done, and she goes and prepares herself, she knows what, what time he's coming home, and then she just meets him with a big smile, and she shows that, she shows that she's happy that he's there. That's all, subhanAllah. It's not the, the, her physical look, not, not, nothing to do with that, but it's her demeanor, it's her behavior, subhanAllah. So when he sees her, he's pleased, he's happy. When he says something that something has to be done, and I don't like a lot of the time I don't like to use the, the word command and order because the sisters get they will wait for me outside with tomatoes and maybe some, some eggs. We think we'll have enough to make a lot of omelets later. But subhanAllah, but he when he 
Suggest something. How about that? Suggest is good. Huh? Suggest, please, honey, do this, do that. Huh? He will, uh, she, she will, she will do that. She will comply. Subhanallah. She does not go against his wishes when he, in, even in regards to, to her wealth and especially her self. Subhanallah. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam يعني ذكر هذا في حديث النسائي قال أنا أخبره بنسائكم من أهل الجنة I want the sisters to listen to this one يعني اسمعوا اسمعنا رحمتهم الله ورحمتهم الله ألا أخبركم بنساء بنسائكم من أهل الجنة you want the الجنة sisters listen to this one shouldn't I tell you about from who are the ones that the, the dwellers of the الجنة from your Uh, your women or your, your wives. Al Walud, Al Walud. The one that is sweet. How the men, by nature, they are the ones that are men. You don't want another man with you, right? You don't want someone who's like, yeah, he, uh, you, you say two words, she, she says five, you say 200, she'll say 1375 and a half. Yeah, he, you want the sweetness. It's very important that, yeah, he, being feminine. Your feminine side, show it to your husband because he likes that, he wants to see that. So, and walud, and walud, the one that is able and willing, of course, to, to give birth to, uh, and he give, uh, uh, you know, give birth to, to many children. Al-A'udu ala zawjiha. What is this? What does it mean? Al-A'udu ala zawjiha. For the ones that speak Arabic. Al-A'udu ala zawjiha. So I can take a sip here. Huh? Anyone? هذا قبل الأكل فإذا أكلنا كان الله بعونهم العقود على زوجها أي الغيور الغيور على زوجها the one that has jealousy when he comes to her husband but not that not that jealousy that everyone is thinking of where were you uh, you were two and a half minutes late where uh, you, when you were looking no الغي الاتقار على يعني على شرف زوجها وعلى نفسه she's the one that يعني her jealousy is towards she's very jealous when it comes to the person of her husband his personality, his weight, his reputation, his honor that's the kind of jealousy that the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is talking about SubhanAllah التي إذا listen to this one التي إذا آلت أو أوذيت آلت She's the one that, يعني, in a dispute, in a problem, and those, those things happen, right? She's the one that is at fault. She's the one that is an oppressor. She's the one that oppressed. Or she's the one that was oppressed. She's the one at fault, or the husband is at fault in the, whatever the dispute is. What happens? How nowadays, we see that from experience. When that happens, it is the women that they stay. They will not talk to the husband, even if it takes three and a half months and 75 other days. Huh? Subhanallah, she's not going to speak to him. He's, he's going to do it. But the Prophet said otherwise. The Messenger of Allah is telling you, Jaat hatta ta'kula bi She She's the one that went to talk to him. And she takes his hand. Thumma ta'kulu. Wallahi la aduku hamdan hatta ta'ba. By Allah, the same night, the same day, By Allah, I will not taste any kind of sleep. Huh? I will not taste any kind of sleep until you are pleased with me and you're not angry with me anymore. Huh? In another hadith that says the same thing, Allah the Prophet said, Hiya fi jannah, hiya fi jannah, hiya fi jannah. Three times she's in the jannah. You see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the jannah very, very easy for women? Wallahi, he did it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam showed us the example of some great women. Khadija, for example. And I'll mention this one incident that all of us are uh, familiar with. And this is the incident that, yani, inshallah, will save all of us and many other billions of people from the hellfire. And that's the, the incident of Badr uh, Wahi. Long hadith of Aisha, in al Bukhari, she spoke about the incident. What, what happened to the Prophet said that the fact that he was really spooked, he was really scared, 
by the first encounter with Jibari, and he arrived down the mountain, and who did he look for? His uncle, his children, his, he went straight to Khadija, huh? asking them to cover him, says, cover me, cover me. Now, I want you to think about this. Any other woman, any other woman, especially in our time, the husband comes through the door, he's scared, so what happens? What happened? What happened? Tell me, what happened now? Let me just breathe. No, 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 she wants to know right now. But what did Khadija do? Khadija, in her, what she did, is a, yeah, it's a lesson for all of us, for all the, for all, all the, 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 the women of, uh, uh, and the wives of the Muslims in general. If the husband comes in upset, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, he, uh, there's something wrong with him, give him a chance to breathe. Give him a chance to sit down. And then when he's able to, he's going to tell you. And that's what she did. She covered him and said nothing. Even though the man came in scared, she said nothing. Hatta huh? Aisha says, she describes Hatta ila sadana an kurrawa. That subhanAllah, he who was covered, he relaxed. He is the one that came and initiated the conversation. He is the one that came and told her, this is what happened, and this is what happened. She did not ask at all whatsoever, subhanAllah. Another incident with Ummu Salam. All of us are, aware, are uh, familiar with the incident of al -Hulim. The long incident where the Sahaba, the Prophet and the Sahaba came to the Umrah, but they were prevented from doing so. They said in Hudaybiyah then, they had all these negotiations with many people from Quraysh, and subhanAllah, the terms of the, 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 the contract, the covenant that they put together, seemed to be very unfair to Muslims, so much so that the Sahaba were very upset. And they were so upset, and listen to this, and this never happened before or after. They were so upset that the Prophet also, he gave them a direct order and they ignored him. Imagine that. They had never done that before or after. They were so upset, he said, okay, we're not, able, we're not going to be able to do Roma, but let's just slaughter our animals and uh, 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 shave our heads and head home. They just didn't say it, they just sat down and did nothing. So much so that he got very upset and he went inside. Umm Salam was next to us. What happened? It's like, well, I commanded them to do something and they, they did nothing. She said, well, you, you have to, yeah, they, uh, uh, she's making excuses for them. It's normal that they were, yeah, they're very disappointed with the outcome and they were supposed to do Umar. She said, just, this is what you do. She gave them a very good advice. Go ahead, what you want to do, go ahead and do it, and you'll see, they will follow you. That's exactly what he did. He went out. He slaughtered his animal, he called his halat to shave his head, and then all of a sudden, all of them start doing the same thing. SubhanAllah, a righteous wife will give you the right advice when you need it the most. SubhanAllah, but the one you know, from the other kind will get you in big trouble when you need it the least. SubhanAllah. Remember this, for those that are not married, are not married yet, when you make your choice, make sure that you make it based on this. Allah, as I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a jannah very easy for our sisters. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala, Hadith al-Khajar ibn Ahmad, إِلَى صَلَّةِ الْمَرْأَةُ خَرْسَهَا وَصَامَتْ شَهْرَهَا وَحَصَّلَتْ فَرْجَهَا وَأَطَاعَتْ زَوْجَهَا إِلَى لَهَا وَدْخُلِ الْجَنَّةَ مِنْ أَيِّ أَلْوَابِهَا وَمِنْ أَيِّ أَلْوَابِ الْجَنَّةِ شِئْتِ The woman, the Muslim woman, if she prays her five, and she fasts her month, the month of Ramadan, and she protects her chastity, and she obeys her husband, if she will be told, subhanAllah, to enter a jinnah from any of the gates that she wants. She can pick and choose anything. Look how easy a jinnah is for our sisters. I will close with this, inshallah, ta'ala, so that all of you will go enjoy some food meat, billah ta'ala. How? Can we show gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the ni'mah of marriage? How? By saying alhamdulillah, that's a start. By doing it in sujood, say alhamdulillah in sujood, yeah, that's a start. But then, then we know that for a fact that in order to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a ni'mah, if it is, that ni'mah is an object, you use it in the obedience of Allah. But if the ni'mah is a, a person, then it's something else. For men, for example, how can you can you show gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
whoever is talking, uh, yeah, hit me. Son, like, whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with a righteous wife, how should, be great, should he be grateful to Allah? Number one, give her all of her rights. Without any exception. All the rights that Allah has given her, you have to give her, subhanAllah. The mother, the place to live, the, the clothes she wears, all of that is your responsibility, subhanAllah. Number two, Rabdul Basar. You got married to protect yourself, so you don't have to look anywhere else, so stop looking. Huh? Stop looking. You have to lower your lower your vision, your gaze, subhanAllah. Number three, Take care of her. Be good to her. Be kind to her. Protect her. SubhanAllah. Be polite when you deal with her. Even after 20 years of marriage, and you get people take things for granted after a long time. Still, you have to keep doing those things as the Prophet said and showed us by example. And taqi Allah Azza wa Jalla fiha. To fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he comes to your behavior with her. This is something that happens a lot. People that marry sisters from overseas and they bring it here. When you bring a sister from overseas, she leaves her parents, her brothers, her sisters, her family, and you become her world. You're everything for her. Huh? And subhanAllah, all of a sudden, that person that's supposed to be everything becomes the one that she cannot trust anymore. How do you think that, what a feeling that, that, that must be? A horrible feeling. So you, you have to be very aware of this, subhanAllah, you are everything for her, so be everything for her in a positive way, in the right way, the way that the Messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you. Number five, and this is, this is five of many, be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, uh, and one thing that I've noticed throughout the years in different passages, the young people, when they're not there, MashaAllah, every day in the mission. They get married. <laughs> ah, SubhanAllah. You look, you look for him. Did he move or something? No, 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 no. He just got married. You don't see him anymore. Yeah, I mean, the masjid, it takes 15, 20 minutes. You know, the distance, the, the salah, and then you can go back. You can go back, inshallah. No problem. You know, she's going to be waiting. Don't worry. But SubhanAllah, don't disappear from the mission. When, when Allah gives you the bounty of marriage, be grateful to him by doing more more obedience to him than doing the opposite. For the sisters, how, are you, how can you be grateful to Allah for a righteous husband? Of course, to, to obey him within the obedience of Allah. And this is key. Any ship could not possibly have two captains. Two captains, what, what happens in the ship? What happens in the ship? Where's the Bukhari to tell us? Huh? He will sing, subhanAllah. So, Allah made him the captain of the ship. Do you want to change what Allah did? Don't change what Allah did. Allah did it. So he did it for a reason. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the wisdom. So trust the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His rights. The husband has rights. Those rights, if I was to go into to them, but when I finish today. Allah, the, the Prophet, the, uh, Allah his messenger gave uh, husband's rights as he gave the wife's rights. Those rights have to be fulfilled, subhanAllah. And what are those rights here for? I mean, this is a, something that a lot of people suffer from. Is the rate of intimacy. When there's a problem, uh, and, and, and a problem that is not resolved and outstanding, this is something that the sisters resort to every single time. SubhanAllah. They leave the, the, the beds of their husbands. Then you should know that SubhanAllah, when this happens, every single night that that happens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and His angels send, send their curse all night long. For as long as this keeps happening, and Allah, I've heard many people that come to me, they, they talk about this, they, their problems. Some people, they suffer from this for months and months at a time. He, one of the, the reasons why he married you is to protect himself from haram. And you, here you are, pushing him huh, to look for haram. May Allah protect you and I. SubhanAllah. So this is very, very important. Nisa'ukum, Allah said, Nisa'ukum hafthur lahum fa'tu hafthakum anna shaykhum. Your women, your wives are half for you. SubhanAllah. So you have the right to, to come to your half anytime that you, you please. Ghabdul Basar. The sisters have to do Ghabdul Basar as well. And SubhanAllah. Yani, 
This, the, and the biggest problem is being the sea range and soap operas. Now, you see that, how gorgeous he is? Oh, man. Look at this, this dude that I have here in the house wearing pajamas with the three holes in them. And if, look at that. He can't even comb his hair. They start comparing. That's how Don't look. You have a husband. Allah gave you a righteous husband. Don't look, Yani. You have to protect your eyesight from looking at other things because this is a, a, a door from the shaitan and also what the other what the other women have. You see her husband? Uh, he does this and he brings this and he buys this and he buys that. You see the, the car? Do you see the I know the sisters, unfortunately, they know that. They, they, subhanAllah, they pay attention to these things a lot more. So this is the kind of fabd al that they, they have to do. And she, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you a second a source of tranquility for your husband. So be that. Be a source of tranquility. Don't be the opposite. Don't be a source of negative. A huh? person that is a source of <coughs> stress and that's kind of the, the source of his headache and the down the road he's part of that. Be the one that preserves his health by giving him tranquility. It is your role as a wife. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you has given that role to you in the Quran, subhanAllah. So, yeah, I mean, so much to be said about the subject of marriage. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's make dua for our brother Musa, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless his marriage. Barakallahu lakuma wa alaykuma wa jama'a baynakuma fi khayr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your marriage, bless your wife, and subhanAllah give you many children. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the, the ability to all the brothers and sisters that are not married, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them righteous wives and righteous husbands. Aqulu qawli hadha wa s'afsun Allah wa lakum. Subhana rabbika wa rabbil izzati anna asifun. Wa salamu ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillah wa rabbil alameen. Jazakumullah khayran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.